DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Time for Tuesday Night Live Chat with Brian S. Red and John Young. Good evening and welcome to our third and final segment tonight on our Tuesday night shows here on DJ and TV. Tonight, Brian and I are going to be kind of digging into the whole idea of when guests and, and special people want to use their microphones and some maybe do's and some don'ts and some frustrations. And yeah, that's what our show is going to be about tonight. And first All off, right. you've got an assistant tonight. Well, she's gonna. We're gonna get rid of her in a second. She just wanted to say hi, <laughs> Lola. Lola, the monkey dog. The monkey dog. No. Now, go on, Lola. Go do something else. No. Okay. So, so tonight's topic uh, came out because uh, you had you'd uh, put a video together where you were talking a little bit about giving your microphone to amateurs, and how much you enjoyed that because it always went well. Well, right. I mentioned it. In a post, I believe, and I just said how incredibly frustrating it was to hand a microphone to an amateur in an event. And I found it funny that so many people were saying, Well, just give them a quick microphone lesson before you hand them the mic, and everything will be okay. And my reply to that was, That's a great tip if you're gigging in fantasy land, because <laughs> in reality, a lot, a, several things happen with this. Um, and I can walk you through these things tonight. So. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, it. I just don't know a great way to do this. And I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I've tried a lot of different things. But nothing seems to be the thing that solves all of my problems. It just... It's a pain in the butt. It, it really is. And it can be one of those things that we, we talk about wanting to be professional and that we can do this, the emceeing and everything, just everyone's like, ooh, he sounds good. And then the sound systems, the, this covering, wow, this is just a great experience. No matter how good we are and how good of equipment we have, occasionally we're at the complete mercy of someone who's a novice with a microphone or has no idea. And I, somebody had posted again this week is how do you, how do you get people? I think it was actually in a church forum. You know, how do you, how do you keep people from testing the microphone like that? <laughs> or, you know, holding, it's just, it's, it's such a, a frustration because I can have a, and I do and with my head table microphone, I've got a, a wireless mic itself that is about a $500 element that's up there. I mean, it's the most expensive one I could buy at the time. <clears throat> yeah. It doesn't help. It doesn't help if they don't use the microphone right. Out of curiosity, just before we go any further, when you want to see if a mic is live, what do you do? What I have done is I would prefer this a little bit because I, I can hear that generally over top. And if I just kind of if I'm rubbing over the top of the element or the uh, yeah. the grill, I can hear that. Or you know, I, there's the hello, but I would rather just do something that's that's less just a little bit because all I have to do is just hear, if I can hear anything out there, I know it's on. You know, my mic test has been I mean since I was a teenager. Yep. Just tch, just a tch. Mm hmm And and people will laugh at me. Like especially at like a club, you already know the setup, you already know everything's okay. Mike's like tch. okay. And that's that's so nothing. Yeah. It, no one even notices it, but you can hear it. 
So yeah. that's been my mic test since I was a teen. Yeah, well, just I mean, yeah, if I really need to test walk walk around a room to, you know, test a microphone uh, capability range uh GQ whatever, that's different, but just to see if it's live it's something I've always done. And most people just don't even yeah, way most people don't even catch that. It's mm -hmm. it's not disruptive or anything. So DJ Rez mentions that uh, that a tip that they tell people is the idea of eat, of holding a mic like you're eating an ice cream cone, mm -hmm. and and that I, that's a great tip. It's a great tip, and those are things that you know we like to talk to people uh, talk to people about. It's just the number of times that they're like, okay, yeah, I got it, I got it. Okay, we're going to talk about the bride and groom tonight, and uh, next thing you know, it's back down to their belly button. Exactly. And it's exactly, it's, and that's the, that's where the problem comes in. If I, you know, well, okay, there, there's a couple things that happen, and I'm not just talking weddings. In fact, my frustration from this actually came from a corporate event that I worked last Thursday. Very true. Yes, but it could be a wedding as well. The same kind of things happen. So, let's say that you're talking to someone who is going to use the microphone. That's the first thing that I feel like we should touch on because that's the, that's the answer that a lot of people are giving me. That's the answer to all of my problems is just talk to these people. Mm -hmm. So let's say, yeah, okay. Beth is going to be our speaker tonight. So I'm going to have a conversation with Beth about the microphone. So, if I go to Beth and I say, okay, Beth, just a couple tips real quick here for you. When you're holding this mic, make sure you hold it right here, like to your chin. Speak over it. You don't want to speak into it. Speak over it. It'll help with those T's and S's and things. If nobody can hear you, you have to hold it up to your mouth. If you start dropping it like this, it's, it's going to be less effective the further away you get it. So just keep it to your mouth. And yeah, as you can see, it works. So if you do what I do, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter what I say. The whole time I'm saying it, she's being incredibly dismissive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know how to use the microphone. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, and as she's holding her hand up, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. This is very normal. So this used to really upset me and then I just kind of decided this was just kind of where people are a lot kind of half the people are are the yeah 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 like it's a microphone how hard can this be sure um, so then I started kind of putting a I guess a little preamble on the whole thing where I would say look I know you already know all of this stuff, <laughs> but I'm just going to give you a quick refresher here. Hold the microphone like this, and you go along with it, but you still get the yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, she may or may not hold the mic properly. She may or may not have taken my advice. This is where the problem comes in. Beth isn't our only speaker, but Beth didn't tell us that, and no one told us that. Mm, yes. We've asked several times who's speaking on the microphone, and, and we try to nail them down. Okay, Father of the Bride is speaking, and the best man and maid of honor, and I'm assuming that Pastor Bill already knows how to use a microphone, so I'm not going to bug him too much about it, but sometimes he don't. It doesn't matter. So even if I talk to all these people and explain to them how to hold the microphone, they're going to pass it to Father of the Groom, and they're going to pass it to Anne, the bride's little cousin, and Mom, and Steve, the other groomsman who didn't make the cut for best man. And, they, and, and someone made a wonderful comment, and I wanted to say it, and I didn't, and I'm glad that somebody did. Have you ever seen those group therapy sessions? Where you have to have the stick to talk. It's like the permission oh, yes. stick to yep. talk. Yeah. It's like you can't talk unless you're holding the stick. It's almost how they treat the microphone. So <laughs> if I'm holding it, it's my turn to talk, but I don't have to talk into it. It's just a permission stick. I yeah. can dictate with it and do all <laughs> kinds of things. I love that when you've got people, grandmas are gesturing. 
And then over there, there's our cousins from St. Louis. And, and right another there. thing. Can you turn it up, please? Nobody can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the other part that just drives me absolutely up a wall. When people can't be heard on the mic, everyone looks at you. Yep. And thrusts their fingers up in the air. Like everybody's a sound tech all of a sudden. Everybody's a, you know, the, a director. And after you, you, you try to like just he has to hold the, you know. And finally you just get on your live microphone. He has to hold the mic to his mouth and it'll work just fine. Cause what else are you gonna do? They're putting you on the spot. Mm -hmm. And then they're looking at you like you're the bad guy for even saying that, and then he puts the mic up, everybody claps. It's just hard because you're handing it to amateurs. Corporate is just as bad as wedding, if not worse. Because you can't tell the boss how to do anything. Right. Oh, well, at and this happened. This happened the other day. At 620, I'm going to take the mic and bring it to president of the company. Okay, where is he? Well, he's not here yet. Mm-hmm. Gonna make a surprise appearance, like he's freaking Michael Jackson or something, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he thinks a lot of himself, so I have no opportunity to talk to this guy at all. And this guy has no idea how to use a microphone, no clue. It's it's this, you know. Yeah, way down, way too low. Yep, down by the right. belly button. And then he passes it to three more people. And the only guy who knows how to use it is the very last guy. And he is and and, and I've got the mic so hot that he also because I'm just trying to pick everybody up. This guy gets on the mic. Okay, everybody, we're gonna go into the next drug. And um. everybody is startled. I don't know. I don't know the answer. And I haven't seen anybody give me a good one yet um, as to how to handle this without a lot of work. How we actually offered a really interesting suggestion. So when someone's on the microphone and nobody can hear them, instead of saying anything about it, he goes up to them, places his hand kind of on their back and whispers in their ear, put it to your mouth. And then they do and... It's it's a nice thing to do if you have the legs to chase people around a room and do this. Yeah, exactly. You've got to have the right situation. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So you have to learn how to use this thing or, or else. I just, I can't stand it. And nothing anybody says, usually anybody wants to hear anyway. It's just like. So my, my, my greatest success, and again, I'm coming from weddings. I haven't done a corporate event per, like that. Um, yeah. The, the corporate events I have done where they've used microphones, I've insisted they've used headset microphones because I wanted these guys are doing um, an auction and drawings. It's like, I will give you headset mics. That way you've got both of your hands free. More importantly, the year I didn't do that is they were doing the up and down and up and down and the room was terrible. So, But at a wedding, my methodology of doing this is, is I will have one or two spots where I will talk to more than just the bride and groom, I'm going to talk to the bride and groom in the wedding party, and I try to at least make sure I'm having bride and groom and best man, uh, matron of honor or maid of honor. The more, the merrier. And it's like, okay, so here's the microphone. Here's the switch on the microphone. When you turn this on, it's going to go, it's red, it's red, it's red, it's green. There's a delay. Once it's green, you can talk. So just flip it on, count to three, smile at the audience, and then start, and you'll be fine. Secondly is if you're holding it here, we're going to hear you, and everyone's going to think you sound like a rock star. If you hold it here it's going to sound very poor and you're not going to be able to hear you. So where do you want to hold it? And they all are like, oh, we got to hold it up here. Great. Can you guys keep an eye out for it? And if somebody's hand starts to drift down, can you just kind of casually remind them? And so I put it on top of the wedding party a little bit and it has worked fabulously because then if they, the, someone starts to drift down, the, they're like, hey, get the mic back up there. Or even I've done if, that with bridesmaids before. Yeah, bridesmaids have been the best for this. Absolutely best. It guys. Yeah, and they, they're not afraid to say something. Following directions. Yeah. They are very good, and it's been this has been the the greatest success I have had is just in in using the wedding party and going through it with more than just the the two, 
and um, and mm-hmm. it's worked well because I I don't like to have the bride be the one to have to do because it sometimes might look like she's you know hold the mic up as she's so the brides may just kind of jump on that and they yeah. will they will go and if the parents aren't holding the, the father or whatever they will <laughs> say hold it up higher it's worked very very well much better than if I'm on the you know other side of the room <laughs> trying to catch your attention and I have done that wave you know everyone's looking there the head table people are facing me and you know so everyone <clears throat> no one's looking at me but the head table and it's like you know holding the mic up it doesn't really look good on video if somebody gets that you know because what is what is john doing over there wow well, it's weird yeah so so that would be my suggestion now corporate event corporate uh, they're a nightmare because as you say you've got five people who come up and speak three of them don't know what they're doing one of them does one of them thinks he's he's uh you know going to be coming in there and he can do everything without a microphone because he's that loud and then you're trying to deal with this oh it's a nightmare. There's just no. I, I just it's the least favorite part of my job is being a microphone tech. Yeah. It always has been. I hate it. I hate it. The microphone. This, this is the best way I can I can sum up my frustrations. This is and by the way, if you're a mic person, it's a pretty cool mic I got right here. It's highly illegal to use anymore, but it's very cool. Mm. Uh, this is an instrument just like a piano or a saxophone or a flute or a drum kit the good news is it's very easy to learn how to use but it's still an instrument you need some instruction to use it Mm -hmm. yes and if you go at it with no instruction or you just assume that you know how to use it uh, and then everything goes pear-shaped and we got a problem but yeah it's it's tough, man. I, I, I hate that part of my job. And yeah. and I don't know. It seems like no matter how hard I try, it doesn't go well. It just doesn't work. Uh, people get nervous. Uh, some people say, well, put it on a mic stand. Yeah, I've heard that one. Uh, people want to stand where they want to stand. Exactly. And, and that's, you know. And I want to have the that sh- again at a wedding. I want to have that that picture where the bride and groom are there, and the best man is to the side, or or you know they're right there. So you've got your bride and groom and the best man, or the bride and groom and the matron of honor, or you know that they're all like there. And I've seen some where they've had you know the head tables here, and then over here is where they have the the announcing area where the microphone stand is. Well, that doesn't make a great picture of the you know, right. there's a bride and groom looking somewhere, and there's that. I don't I don't care for that. I've Well I've, the other issue with that I feel like is is stage fright. Some people want to be in their comfort zone, which is near their seat or near their spouse or whatever when they speak. Right. Yes, good point. And what about somebody who can't get up and stand at a podium? A disabled person or an elderly person, somebody in a wheelchair? You gotta bring the mic to them. Yeah. Very good point. Oh. Yes. Especially when you get into grandparents that that I've numerous times where they uh, you know grandpa can't get up but grandpa wanted to uh, do a swedish or norwegian prayer i think i heard like three of those this summer you know from elderly grandparents it is not an md31 the md31 is the wired version this is the wireless version and quite honestly i don't have my reading glasses on to tell you what the actual number is but it looks like an md31 except it's a black capsule instead of a silver but it uh, when or a guard on there got a capsule guard so close but not quite i forget the model number on it anyway more more cool old print stuff there you are so the i want to kind of progress from microphones for announcements to situations where we're at an event and again we're kind of wedding specific here because that's where it's it's come up the most for me is the times where somebody comes up and they're like hey do you got a mic we want to sing along no (laughs) and uh, and it seemed like there was a period of time when um, when, when karaoke came out that everyone was like, oh, can we do can we, can we do karaoke? No. Um, and then it went away, and then people were just not. And it's, now I'm back to the point where people are like, hey. Can, and it's, there's times where it's an important person in a wedding party or something, and I'm, I'm struggling with this. Do I, do I embrace this and just be prepared for it? Because I, I don't want them using my expensive microphones, even though they probably are going to do a fine job. There's just that risk of my really expensive microphones being fumbled and, and done because they've, they've obviously by this time they probably had a few to drink. Well, I, I had this guy come up to me, and it had been a while back. 
I was doing other things. I was in the middle of trying to plan an entrance or something. I, at any rate, I was busy. And, hey, by the way, I'm going to sing on the mic. So I'm going to need that microphone. No, you're not getting the microphone. Yeah, I, this is my thing. It's just my thing. I do it at every wedding. So I'm going to need that microphone. You're going to give it to me. Like, no, I'm not, dude. Yeah. You're going to have to go sit down. You're not getting the mic. Well, no, they they want me to do it. Trust me. I mean, I want to be a surprise, but they're really going to like it. So you just got to trust me, and you're going to give me that microphone because I'm like, dude, I'm not giving you my microphone. Sorry. Not doing it. Not on my list. You're not doing it. And there was a, a wedding coordinator there that they hired who actually was taking the bull by the horns on stuff. So I thought, okay, fine. Let's see if this lady's worth her, her weight in toothpaste. So I said, hey, coordinator, mm -hmm. a guy who wants to use the microphone. I said, absolutely not. Or he wants to sing on the microphone. Absolutely not. So that's, that was my thought, too. I just wondered, you know. So she comes up to me after a few minutes and says, you know, I don't know. I don't want to ruin the surprise or anything, but I really feel like I should run this past her because there are things that she wants and doesn't want. And yes, so she does. She goes up there and I'm with her and she says, Hey, some guy wanted to sing. Them. Oh yes. Give him the mic. He's wonderful. It was his approach to it. Yeah, exactly. Where he was just so entitled mm -hmm. with it. And, and every instinct in my body said, do not give this guy the microphone. I've had people come up and like the the mother of the groom. Hey, you know, I want to surprise him at about 620. If I can have that microphone, I want to do a sing along with everybody and kind of get everybody hyped up. And okay. I want to be surprised though. <laughs> Fuck. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, it's like like Steve, I wasn't. I'm supposed. To, it's supposed to be a surprise and all, but your mom asked about a microphone and a single. Line. Absolutely not. She's not paying for this. This is our wedding. She. So you never know. Is my yeah. point. Yes. There, there's never a right thing to do, except just to say no. Mm -hmm. And 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 deal with. I would rather deal with the. It doesn't happen. Consequences. Then it happens, and it's stupid consequences. Does that make sense to you? Oh, for sure. Certainly for sure. And and I think this is, well, while we can't ask every question, we can't in the planning process and such, this is one of the things that I, I try to remember to ask about. You know, are there any special activities that are family traditions that might be popping up? Are there things that your friends do at everybody's wedding that, that might pop up? Sometimes you catch these, and sometimes, like the wedding a, a few weeks back, I didn't, that conversation went on, nothing was said, and then we find out that the the best man, or yes, the best man, the brother of the groom, was a great singer, a great rapper, and he yeah. would rap around, and it would have, with not doing it would have given, they, would, they still would have had a fine reception, but it's just right. one of those memory things because now he was up there did his song and then they did a second song where the two boys got together and did that that's a memory that those people are going to take with them for the rest of their lives and it's like oh gosh i have always had that rule of not letting people use my microphone not doing that unless we were actually doing a full and now it's like gosh do i need to do i need you know, to you know, i'm just sitting here thinking to myself and i'm, I'm not even i'm half serious about this but it would be almost cool to put a clause in the contract, like a performance clause in the contract, where if I have to hand the microphone for someone to sing, it's this different level of things, and now they owe me an extra 500 bucks. Well, and that's what I was so, actually toying around with, taking kind of Howie's idea when Howie yeah. did, the, did the mic drop thing. You know, there was an additional charge for that. And say, hey, I would – is this going to be – is there someone who is going to be – would this be of interest? And if so, I'll set up – you know, I'll have my little, um, little four-channel mixer – that I'll plug everything in and I'll have two microphones on the stand, wired mics on the stand that people, they can come up and they can sing on it from an approved list that the bride and groom have to approve before we, we get there. So I know I'm not going to have just Jane Doe come up there and then we can, we can run this because I, again, 
if we're wanting to create the memories, and if that's one of those memories that they're going to, they, you know, the guy, the bride's like, oh my God, I want to have him sing at my wedding. I don't want to take that away from her. But I also don't want to hand them a, you know, a thousand dollar microphone and watch them go, wow, crunch. Yeah. You know? Right. I, there's always a fear of that, but that's with anything. I, I don't know. I, you know, I always wonder where these dogs think they're going. They're going back and forth in the living room. They're not like <laughs> traveling anywhere particular. They're just arbitrarily running around. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. <laughs> and yeah, I don't we can definitely hear them. it. It's just disruptive. No, but um, <laughs> I don't know. What are we doing here? Am I a karaoke host or am I, yeah. you know, trying to coordinate MC? And DJ your event. Um, if I have to be a karaoke host and I got to worry about this crap too, I think you need to pay me more money for this. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely, especially when you're bringing more gear and there's more risk to damage to gear. More risk, more stuff to think about, more stuff to worry about, more stuff to manage. Hand it over. Happy to do it, but give me more money. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be funny to say, yeah, if anybody sings this next five hundred dollars, says what it is. <laughs> Yeah. It's and, my rule. Because then it becomes karaoke. And then if they're a bad singer, there's an extra fifty dollars per song for bad singers. Yeah. Squirrel. <laughs> uh, uh where are you going, dog? That's nice. They're playing. It's convenient. They're having fun up there. Mm-hmm. So to kind of wrap up our, our mic discussion tonight, we don't have any answers. We have a lot of no. frustrations. Yeah. People who are drunk and want to sing can suck. And mm-hmm. corporate events are a nightmare. <laughs> Did I sum it up pretty well? Well, you know, the good news is, you, you know, if you're getting paid for it, then at the end of the day, you walk home with some dough. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice to put it together where it wasn't such a pain in the butt. Mm. And people could actually, you know, I don't know. They're as organized as they are. They just become very unorganized really quick. Corporate and wedding. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, they can do that. So that's all I got. Uh, okay, just making a note here for the dogs are completely distracting me here. Yeah, they're 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 doing well. They're <laughs> doing well. So for those of you who want to basically us to stay on topic, we, we, we're going to wrap the topic up there. And uh, this is this is going to be kind of more the, the uh, general chat. So if you're not wanting to hear us talk about other things in life, this is the time to, to thank you for watching. And you guys have yourself a great weekend. We'll be back with more stuff tomorrow. And you can check us out tomorrow. Who do I have on? I've got... Oh, I can't even remember. Oh, hey, Kilma's going to be on tomorrow night uh, on, on the first show at 7 o'clock Central. 8 o'clock Eastern, so we can check that out, and we'll catch you tomorrow night's show. So, Brian, we haven't talked about the car in a couple of weeks. We need to get an update on, on where we're at with the car, because I've been seeing some pictures, and, and I'm, not, I, I, I'm not following along. I'm not sure if, you're, if you're, you're pulling things out and rebuilding or if you've got people coming over to help with it, so kind of bring us up to the speed of where I got we're... help, and I, I just, I'm, I'm working on suspension now. Okay. So we did rear leaf springs and going to start on the front end soon and and, on, and the red and, the red mustang that i'm seeing next to the white one what's give give me the story on that one i'm not sure on that oh geez yeah we we bought that car i'm trying to think i think it was either in 2003 or 2004 just because my dad was never going to get to the white one okay and he, he 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 had this dream where he wanted to drive his grandkids around in a classic car, and just kind of looking at the clock and knowing how what his pace was on completing things. Mom found that car at a rummage sale. Asked me to go look at it. I did. I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And we thought, okay, why don't you just buy this? It's a driver. You can drive your grandkids around in it. And later, because by the time you get around to working on this white one, your grandkids are going to have their own kids. Right. Okay. So, so here's your opportunity to drive your grandkids around in a car. So he bought it and he did. And then we, um, I worked on it, just little things here and there, some dents and things. And then it was never good enough for dad, though. He always wanted it to look nicer, being a nicer car. 
and get things done on it like you know major body work and stuff floor pans engine work interior so i suggested i was in about 2010 i'm like hey why don't we just go ahead and get this car hooked up let's send it into the shop for the mm -hmm. the winter and get the get it on a rotisserie have the undercarriage all done torque boxes let's have this engine done and cleaned up and uh, we'll put interior in it when it comes back and we'll you know so we did and we put interior in it in the spring of in spring in wisconsin's cold by the way spring of 2011 and we got it back right at the beginning of april i believe or into march uh, and it was still kind of cold but we took it out for a drive as soon as it, it came back off of the truck and we buttoned up the interior and then i had my stroke so they kind of lost interest on the car and the other bummer bit was, even after I learned how to drive, I couldn't drive that car because it's a four-speed car. Ah, okay. So we put all that work into that car. I put work into that car. When I was in the car business, I had it in the shop. I was doing things to it. And um, yeah, three weeks after completion, denied. So that was kind of the joke with the white one. I was, you know, oh, your poor crippled son doesn't have an automatic to drive. It sure would be nice if he had an automatic 65 Mustang to drive. I wonder where we could find one of those. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> so, and that's the white car. It's it's not bad. Mm -hmm. and Dad didn't like swapping out transmissions. He likes like to keep things original. Yeah, that was a big deal with him. Um, you know, a four speed car is kind of a rarity too. So, especially in a, a two eighty nine like that. So anyway, that's the story with the red one. It's actually Mom's car right now. Okay. Unfortunately, Mom can't drive stick either. Oh. So <laughs> there's some things that we need to do to that car. We'll do them in springtime when the weather's nice. And uh, we'll kind of figure out the fate of the car from there. It's bad, too, because everybody in the family wants it. And what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. That's so, a... it's, yeah, there's actually a lot of money in that car. Mom could use that, though, to do something cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you go to sell it, then everybody in the family is waving money around. And I don't know. The red car is kind of a headache. I'd I like her just to not do anything with it, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, it definitely looks like a, a very, very nice looking car and a really yeah, good shape. It is. It's, it's a nice convertible. It's always kind of what he wanted. It's a Detroit car. Um, the white one is a lot straighter because it's just a time capsule car. Straighter? Why do you use the phrase straighter? Straighter. Straighter. Yeah, why would you use that phrase, phraseology? Well, body panels have never been replaced on it. I think quarters were replaced at one time on the red car. Okay. The the undercarriage was completely replaced. It just has some quirks on it. Gotcha. Being a Detroit car, being a Midwestern car, at one time it was a rust bucket, and it was fixed up nice. Uh, and it was done, you know, as right as it could be done. Um, all original steel in that white car. So... It's, hmm. it's very straight. Even if you look at like the sharp body lines in that white car, they're they're just sharp. Like um, like when you iron clothes and you get those lines in them, that's how sharp those lines are on that oh. white car. You don't see lines that sharp on anything. Those cars, after fifty years, they they're just not as straight as that car. That car is a unicorn. It's it. Th those cars do not exist anywhere in that kind of original condition, even. On the West Coast, they 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 just don't exist. You know, cars that have been stored for thirty five years, it's just absolutely unheard of. You do get some rust, you do get um, some wear, you do have body panels replaced, and that's very normal. And there's nothing wrong with that, but this car just hasn't had it. Mm -hmm. I went to a, a car show, the one car show I went to, and the guy was well. That's yeah, a really clean car. You know those. The trunk's got to have rust in it. I was like, no, sir, there's no rust on this car. Oh, those cars all have rust. That's just what they do. It's the seals and it's this and this. And no, sir, this car has no rust. I'd open the trunk and show him. He's looking. He's like, he didn't say a word. He's looking around. 
this original steel in here? I'm like, well, yeah, you can see the original paint right there. That's the original color that the car was. I was mm. telling you. <laughs> Interesting. It just, it just, it does. Those cars don't exist. Yeah, like, you don't see them, especially in the upper Midwest with our snow and winter and anywhere. I used anywhere. To, yeah. I mean, you'd have to go to like, I don't know, like South Texas or something, or um, and not even South Texas, like Central Texas or maybe parts of New Mexico. Yeah, you'd have to be in that that desert and, southwest. And find the car that's just been parked, you know, because and a lot of those cars too, just like all the muscle cars. Um. And you can get a hold of them, you know, after 50 years from the 60s or whatever. But who's had them? You know, some kids had them and 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 put big engines in them and tweaked the body a little bit with the torque and changed this and changed that and cut this and a big hole in the dash for stereo and all these things. Now this car. This was this was always an adult driven car. Or a female driven car. Woman was the original owner of that car. Then my dad had it. Okay. So that car was never abused, or it never had any kind of modifications done to it, or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. Like so many of them have. And in retrospect, you look back at their mistake, and it's a very expensive thing to go back and reverse that. But no, not this car. This car never had anything like that. So it, it's a really, really bizarre little time capsule that way. It's fun as well. Mm -hmm. so. What? Uh, how many miles were on that car? Uh, I don't know. A million? I, don't, I have no idea. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Just wondering if that was something you knew off the top. I mean, of back in the old days, you hit 100,000 and you flipped rolled, it. It rolled over, yeah. Yeah. So, and I don't even know that that's the original cluster. I have another cluster for the car that I suspect might be the original cluster. Oh, ah, okay. So. Parts. Um, so, I don't know. I have no clue. And that's... The second engine, because it's originally a different. There was originally a, a, a V8 in there with a four barrel carburetor. Now it's a six cylinder with a one barrel carburetor. Because the gas crisis and things in China California, yep. and the engine was destroyed. And people don't understand. Well, I've never heard of anybody going from a V8 to a six, and you have to tell them the whole story. Yeah. It's uh, a different time. Well, I've never heard of that. Well, then I guess it never happened if you've never heard of it then, huh? <laughs> so you got to explain. What happened was there was a jealous ex who poured sugar in the gas tank and ruined the original motor. And it happened to be during the fuel crisis in California. So you could save some money by not only putting the six in, but you could also save it the pump. Yeah. And you couldn't get gas every day in California back then. You could only get it every other day, and there were long lines. So, you know, more fuel efficient made the most sense. Yeah. So she had the six put in it to save on fuel uh, it was just an opportunity mm -hmm. so there you have it and now I'm thinking about just building a V8 for it because that six is a lot of work it's becoming a lot of work and uh, I, I have to keep going back and redo things and there's some expensive parts that I have to buy for it, and that money could go towards you know, putting something else in it that so, I wanted to put in there anyway. So that that's something else I'm considering on that car. So would you have to get a uh, uh, an engine from that particular model year, or could you find a an eight cylinder that would be from a different model year that would still fit? Either way, I mean, I have a 289 for the car from the era. I don't believe it's the 65 block, but what I want to do is I want to make it original looking, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like everything else I do. It's not quite off the shelf. I've changed it a little bit. Uh, but it looks like it's from off the shelf. And that's kind of what I am thinking about doing with an engine for this car. There are several directions you can go. It's very confusing. It's kind of a headache sometimes just to think about it. Because we're talking about 50 years worth of engines we can actually put in this thing. Different that's, configurations and yeah, that's what work. I guess I was kind of wondering is how wide of a window I guess I didn't ask right fifty years worth of engines could be. Oh yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, they're they're putting. You have a Ford F one hundred, don't you? Uh, no, I've got a Dodge. I have a Dodge. 
Yeah, we got a Dodge um, Track. They're, they're using these, what they call coyote motors now. They're absolutely huge and they're super wicked mean and people are pulling um, the shock towers out of these old Mustangs and putting coyote motors in them. And they have 650 horsepower just without doing anything. They're just mean motors. Um, Torquey. I'm considering putting a, a 5.0 in it, which is the 302, uh, an HO, uh, which is you know high output, and you get a few benefits with that. The oiling is a little better, and um, you get like things like roller cam, which it's just a little more efficient than a 1965 289. Okay, uh, I'm considering doing that. They're good motors, and I can get a remanufactured one for about eighteen hundred bucks delivered. Uh, that I just have to bolt other things onto, like water pump and intake manifold and things. I don't know what to do, John. It's <laughs> it's just you want to do the right thing. You don't want to make Dad mad. But I suppose if it looks like it belongs there, it's close enough. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, John. It, it's a project. It's getting cold. So I want to just wrap up my suspension right now. Mm -hmm. And after that's done, make decisions on some other things on it. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully sooner than later, you just see me driving down the road, worry free with it. Just carefree, having fun with the car, which is, you know, really what I want to do. Yeah. I'll, I'll, my I'll my brother car. insists that the build is the fun part. And I'm saying, oh, no, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> just go. No, driving. It's the fun part. Yeah. Windows down. Off we go. I'm not arbitrarily just work on this damn thing. You know, I want to own the car. I don't want the car to own me. I want to enjoy it. Mm, yeah. So that's what's going on with the car. Yeah. And, and it, it'll be a little less progress as we go into winter. But then when springtime comes, we'll probably do some pretty heavy duty leaps and bounds quick because I'll have had all um, winter to, um, to plan and scheme this. So. That will those be. Of you are interested, there's way too much time we spent on my car. <laughs> yeah, you've been bu you've been busy with that. That's, but that's not a bad. Well, it's, thing. Uh, it's just I don't know where I'm at right now, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's cool. Uh, before we wrap up, um, anything in the uh, DJ DJ uh, things that have been coming across your radar that uh, that people should keep an eye out for here coming up in the next couple of weeks? Ah. Uh, no, not really. I mean, right now, I think I'm, and this happens. There are sometimes these periods where we're not really seeing a lot of groundbreaking things coming out product-wise. So when that happens, I really like to focus on the actual performance and day-to-day -day and, and you know that kind of stuff with, sure. with DJs. I was just having a conversation uh, with with some people that I actually did ended up making a video on about whether or not it's our and, and this this might sound completely just just Mr. Rogers to you, but sometimes you got to go back to that to reach some people. Is it our job as DJs to help plan weddings and events like this? Yeah, because some people are still at the school thought that I'm the DJ. This is on my job, mm -hmm. and other people are embracing it like yourself and others. Or they're saying, well, yeah, it's part of what I do now. And you know, the job has evolved. And these are the kind of things that are uh, interesting that, that I'm trying to do videos on and discussing now. Um, also, you know, I have some other things planned in the works. And there's a little bit of equipment coming out, too. I've got some stuff that it, it's just kind of, it's here. It's on the back burner. I'm going to take care of it. And, and we're going to see some, some fun stuff. And I'm going to show you some neat ideas on, on some lighting. But... Nothing on my radar that's that's going to change anybody's life, as far as far as I know, unless I miss something. Yeah, I, I think you your statement that it's kind of that I don't want to call it a slow time, but it's kind of a lull between LDI and Nam. I mean, their the companies are gearing up now for Nam, and we'll be starting to get teasers out. But I think well, I, you do have these game changing elements that come along once in a while yeah, yeah. that that just make our lives easier and it makes it more fun and then other times nothing really happens it's just 
it, it they're they're as far as I'm concerned, they're they're kind of reruns, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely definitely quite there's another a LED par fixture. You know, well, this one has a different plug on it, but it's still an LED par fixture. Mm -hmm. It's your audience doesn't care. You might, but your audience doesn't yeah. care. But you know, I don't know. I got real excited about things like the Pro Event Table. Very, very excited about things like the um, the LD Systems Noe Five Go. I even got excited about the tablet. Even got excited about the tablet we talked about a couple weeks ago. That kind of stuff turns me on when I can oh. just figure. And it's nothing new. I just figured it out. And Speaking it was, of the tablet, uh, it's eighty nine dollars today on Amazon. Oh my gosh! Really? Yep. They had uh, the the HD ten, wasn't it? Uh huh. Yep. Eighty nine dollars. I saw. Eighty nine bucks. It was oh my gosh! I'm like buying another one. One day only uh, thing today. So I saw that. Oh really? Just today, huh? Just today, yeah. It was uh, today, and it, I suppose they could be sold out for all I know. But yeah, well, so gonna, we're well, talking about Black more. Friday. They're starting. They they definitely uh, are starting to do that. As everyone is, it's like goodness gracious. Oh, Black Friday. Eighty nine bucks. Howie, did you hear that? Eighty nine bucks. So yeah. he was waiting for a sale on that. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah, that was That's insane. Yeah, I think I'm going to go order another one after this broadcast. <laughs> yes, David, it was the flying tablet, yes. <laughs> the flying tablet is $89. <laughs> yes. I think I'm going to order a second one. Do I need it? No, but I think I'm going to. I, I was looking. I think uh, the 8's the one I want to, uh, and I didn't see the 8 on uh, any special part. Ooh, you want a 10. I know. I, the 8 specs looked about Ooh. the same. You want a 10. Why do I want a 10 over the 8? Screen res. Just that, and we have old man eyes. Well, yeah, I know. Every, I am. I am pretty every much. Counts, and the price isn't that different. Yeah, Trust the, the, me. yeah. That was the only thing I really saw that made the eight look more appealing is that it could handle more memory on it, and it's got a better, much better screen res. Hmm. Well, I'll have much to, better. I've got to go in, and uh, you look at that. need to look at that. Yeah, I mean, it's better than HD on the ten. You don't get that on the eight. Hmm. Um. And again, dude, your eyes, look, you're wearing glasses already. Yeah. Get yourself something you can see. Yeah, exactly. Why? why? And, you know, I really do believe, too, and I have it upstairs right now, so I can't even use it as a prop. But, you know, that thing in a case, it's big enough where it, it doesn't look like you're playing with a toy up there if you need to use it at a gig. Mm -hmm. Or if you get this little tiny thing, it looks like you're on your damn phone again. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, John, buy that 10 if you haven't already. Buy that 10. Thank me for it. <laughs> no, I've got I've to go and, and uh, see what that, because uh, I saw it on my phone this morning. It's like, ooh. That's yeah. a good deal. Go buy one. Alrighty, well, gang, I think we're going to wrap things up for tonight because we're getting kind of to our, our <laughs> end for the evening. And we will, let's see, next week is, we'll be doing our Thanksgiving show, isn't it? It is. It, it'll, so yeah, it'll probably be our last, our, we'll be wrapping up the week, actually, next Tuesday night. We'll be the last ones for the week. No. So, well, so, so we'll have to do something special, do something fun. And if you guys have got any tips on, and, on what you guys would like to see, otherwise, Brian, I'm kind of thinking... I did a show a week or two ago where we basically got together and I put together an older country folder and people were throwing in ideas of songs and different things. I was thinking, we've been talking about the 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 Yacht Rock and the 70s stuff, and I was wondering if we should just go and put together songs, 70s songs that that just making this this hit of kind of not the just you know, not the YMCA and those types of songs, but the, some of those songs that would be kind of cool to play during that cocktail time. From, All right, from that '70s era. So, we might uh, might work on that uh, and and plan for that next Tuesday night when you guys could share some of your suggestions, and we'll be putting just songs in a folder and and getting you that list of songs. So, we'll talk I think it would be interesting to to try to come up with the list of thirty or twenty, and like you come up with a list of twenty. And then it'll always be like Survivor, where some tracks like, you know what, let's get rid of that track, but let's substitute it with this other track. Oh. And try to go with like the ultimate 20-song playlist 
of of these tracks. You know so, what I mean? So okay, I got it. Would we want to eliminate the danceable songs? Because I don't want to. Well, whatever. I mean, maybe I, there's just a song that I think is better, or somebody in the chat thinks it's a better choice than um, whatever you know Huey Lewis and the new song you have in there. We eliminate it, and then it's like, I think this is a better track. So we try to just make the best. A Survivor a you, know, 70s? you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's almost I do. Like we're I, making I, like I, the, yeah. the, the, the greatest hits of Yacht Rock CD. We can only fit 20 tracks on it. Greatest hits, Yacht Rock CD next week. Jimmy, get the, get the thumbnail made. And we're you gonna... come up with as many tracks you can think of, and, and, and then we'll, we'll see if The Room and I can come up with better tracks. The, Better Excellent. tracks, and Excellent. then you aren't going to know what they are, and I'm going to say you got to play it. Oh, we and we'll play them. We will play them. We're going to end up you having play, to. Oh, you're right. This is a better track. Yeah, and, we can. We'll be playing them yeah. live on the show, um, and then of course the video will get blocked. On, we're not going to be able to stream it to Facebook. Okay, it's but okay. We're, we're going to stream it on YouTube, and we will end up having to take it down. And but it will be recorded, <laughs> and it will be available. So next. Well, maybe week, it could be one of those things too, where you come up with a list, and it's like, okay, fine. Let's talk about other tracks that we like too, and then I don't know. We eventually got to compile twenty or whatever it is to fit on a CD or something, just for fun. Yacht Rock Survivor for next week. <laughs> nice. All right. Thank you guys for being with us tonight. I hope you had a good time with uh, the information tonight, and we will see you next time. Good night, everybody. Uh -huh.